Welcome wizards, witches, magical creatures, and muggles to the Magical Harry Potter Challenge. What we have in store for you are DIYs and recipes inspired by the Harry Potter movies. There's a giveaway associated with this challenge as well. Each creator will mention a magical word in their video and you have to put it in the comment section to be eligible for a $50 Amazon gift card. The giveaway ends October 2nd. Let's get into the DIYs. For DIY number one, going to make a Gryffindor flag. So I have an image of the Gryffindor crest. I printed this out uh, from Google. I just did a search for Gryffindor symbol, Gryffindor flag image, and um, I did it in reverse. I had to mirror the image and I printed it on this uh, photo paper direct and you're supposed to cut your image out. And of course I can't use this side because of all of this and it's glued down. So figured, well, I won't even try to rip it off. So you have to lay your image face down and you have to have a, um, a pillowcase or something um, not too thick and have your iron on high per the directions and uh, set my iron to high, preheat it for five minutes, and I have to iron in small circles, pressing as hard as I can, and it says the image should take about three minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'm supposed to peel it off while it's still hot, and my image should transfer. Okay, so while it's still hot, I'm pulling the paper off and I see right away that the color on top is not popping the way it should. And this was a gamble that I knew I was taking because this transfer paper is light transfer paper. And I thought maybe this color wasn't too dark that everything would still show up, but unfortunately it wasn't. And I did print another crest as a backup and this is another alternative that you can use is just to print one out unmirrored on just a regular piece of white paper and tape or glue it to your felt flag i used the transfer on a t-shirt and it came out beautifully the color pops it's very vibrant and i found this shirt at the dollar tree so this was a very inexpensive diy I printed a school crest as well, and I wanted to apply it to a flower sack towel I found at the Dollar Tree, but the middle portion, the color just didn't take. I reapplied the heat several times and it still came out kind of faded. I added a few tassels at the bottom and that completes my Hogwarts banner. Let me know, what do you think of this DIY? I'll have links for these printables in the description box if you want to try this at home. I found this owl at Dollar Tree and I was wondering if I could turn him into a cute kind of cutesy little cartoony Hedwig. I'd seen an illustration of a little cutesy, really wide-eyed Hedwig, and I thought maybe I could transform this kind of Tootsie Roll commercial owl into that type of Hedwig. But first, I've got to get rid of these wings and pull them in here. The wings were tough to get off. I scored them on the front and then tried to 
snap it and it wouldn't work then i flipped it over and scored it on the front and then i grabbed my paint scraper and tried to separate the layers and then it just popped off and then i just repeated the same steps for the other wing The ears were a lot easier, I just scored them a few times and they snapped right off. I used my Dremel to smooth out the edges. Then I removed the twine hanger and I applied matte white apple barrel paint to the entire owl. Once the white paint was dry, I took a pencil and I sectioned off the areas that I wanted to apply feathers to. So I wanted the sides to, to really be full and um, I wanted some feathers to add to right above his claws or her claws excuse me Hedwig is a female owl and then all around the eyes I want to just have it like really plush and full of feathers this boa is from the Dollar Tree kids section and it was the only white one they had everything else was pink I was hoping that this would be enough feathers for my owl and looking at the boa um it is kind of you know kind of straggly so i was trying to figure out the best method to remove them the feathers and i just started yanking them out and i applied like a line of hot glue and then i just started laying my feathers down into the hot glue and luckily there were enough long pieces of feather that i just kind of went in a line I should have started at the bottom and worked my way up then I wouldn't have had to hold feathers up to add glue but I remedied that on the other side when I started to add my glue and feathers. And I'm loving the way this first side is looking. I just trim off some of those long feathers and move on to the other side just adding my glue and my feathers. So for around the eyes, after I put my bead of hot glue, I took the snippings from the wings and applied those feathers since they were shorter and fluffier. And once I had used up all of those, then I went to the longer pieces and just tried to shape them around the curve of the eyes. My magical word is Hedwig, H-E-D-W-I-G. And now it's time for the feet. And after I put my hot glue down, I just took some of those longer feathers and folded them in half and just laid them sideways into the glue. And then I did just a bit more trimming of some of those longer pieces. Then I went around with my scissors and just snipped and just tried to shape up the feather so it would look more like a little baby Hedwig. All right, I'm using jet black from Apple Barrel. For the eyes, I'm using these glossy black buttons and painting the inside with a golden yellow from Apple Barrel. Okay, these eyes are dry now. So I'll hot glue these on. I could have just painted, but I wanted the dimensional effect of having the button eyes 
I wanted marbles, but I didn't have any black marbles. My darkest marble was green, and that wasn't going to work with the yellow of Hedwig's eyes. So I had to use the buttons, and I found these shiny buttons in my stash. And I'm going to cover this in Mod Podge gloss. I'm using gloss Mod Podge, a plaid product. I am a plaid ambassador. I want these eyes to really shine. And here's my beautiful Hedwig all complete next to a replica of the invitation letter Harry got. I know Hedwig didn't deliver it, but it was delivered by an owl. I love the way this Hedwig turned out. Please let me know what do you think of my beautiful snowy owl. Okay, so next I'm going to assemble a Hogwarts Express. My youngest son is just crazy about trains, so I can't make any Harry Potter crafts without doing a Hogwarts Express for him. These will be my wheels, as is my style of crafting. And um, these wooden crates, one will be my tender full of coal, and the other will be the caboose for um, the driver and this wafer tin this will be the front engine because it's really long the front part of the Hogwarts Express so this is what I had on hand that um, resembles it so um, it's raining so I can't spray paint this right now so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and paint these two pieces with a bright red from Apple Barrel I then added jet black paint to what will be the platform of the engine and then to the crate that will be the driver's area of the engine. I then added bright red apple barrel paint around the edge of my platform piece. And then I added plastic and tape for my engine piece. I ended up doing two coats of red and black. I started with the red paint first. I used jet black apple barrel paint for my wheels. And with my red and black paint dry, I removed the plastic and tape from my engine piece. I then did a dry fit of my pieces to see how I would assemble them all together. If you're enjoying this content, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell icon so you're notified every time I upload a new video. I used both Gorilla and hot glue to adhere my wheels. Since there's so many wheels on this, I think this will be supported just fine with all these wheels and I won't have to add the tumbling tower blocks if it was just uh, maybe four wheels then I would add the blocks but there's six wheels on each side and I think that's more than enough to support the pyrrolene can on top and then the um, empty crate because I'm not, nothing's going to be put inside of it. Or oh, there's five, five wheels, three large and then the two small. I'm going to have to use a tumbling tower block for these smaller ones. 
to support the wheels because they're so much shorter. After I painted them black and it all dried, I went ahead and used the Gorilla Wood Glue to attach my tower block pieces. And then once that's set up, I used a combination of a little hot glue and the um, Gorilla Clear Grip Glue to apply my small bottle caps. I need to connect my engine and my pole tender. So I'm gonna use actually these picture hanging kit pieces because my hooks that I have are large and the scale is off for this, so. I didn't have any more bottle caps, so I had one. So I had to use my baked clay, and I just rolled it out, and I used that one cap as a um, a cut, as a, um, a slicer, and I formed four clay wheels. Baked these for 15 minutes at 275, and I put a little dowel rod in there um, as a backup. If I can't find another way to attach them, I'll probably just have to insert the dowel rod and then glue the dowel rod to the bottom here and go straight across. But these will be the wheels. I'm just gonna paint these black. And then using these chalkboard signs that I found at Dollar Tree, I used my gold acrylic painter and fill in the numbers for the side of the engine cab. And then I outline in the gold as well over the white. Then I added my tumbling tower blocks to the center so that my engine could be elevated. Then I started to embellish the side of the driver's cab by gluing on the number sign and then drawing in some windows. I painted and then snipped a few craft sticks to add the different signage around the train, Hogwarts Express, Hogwarts Railway, things like that. And I attached them on the engine and on the coal tender. I added Gorilla Glue to attach my engine to the platform. I used the bamboo skewer and measured on the bottom where I needed to snip so I could glue this down and then attach my wheels for my coal tender. I then added Gorilla Wood Glue to the bottom of my crate and once I had those little pieces of bamboo skewer secured, then I used the Clear Grip Gorilla Glue to add my wheels.
Then I started to add all of my little signage with my clear grip Gorilla Glue and I added the numbers to the front of the train. I attach the back of the engine to the driver car with the clear grip Gorilla Glue as well. I used picture hanging wire to attach my coal tender um, with a little loop so I can take it on and off to the back of the engine. And here's my completed Dollar Tree version of the Hogwarts Express. <laughs> my five-year-old absolutely loves this. Tell me, what do you guys think of my little train? For my next DIY, I'm going to make a Harry Potter doll. Now this is a rag doll that I previously made. I will link a video at the end um, for you to watch if you wanna know how I made this. It's from a canvas tote bag that Dollar Tree sells. You can get two rag dolls this size from that bag. And this bag previously said uh, the cat's meow, I believe. Can kind of read that the only difference with this one is that i didn't um, hot glue this i stitched this because i wanted to stuff it so it'd be really full and soft and i wanted to be able to add more realistic hair than i did with the no sew versions i just did a little bit of hot glue at you know at the bottom where i finished it off to uh, close up everything after it had been stuffed so I'm going to um, make his robe with this black felt that I found at Dollar Tree. These are very inexpensive DIYs. You just have to use your imagination and you can make lots of things. Okay, let me double this. So I laid my fabric out and I used my chalk writer to mark out the neckline and then I cut the neckline and then I realized I cut in the wrong spot. I snipped the wrong side so I rearranged my fabric, made another marking and snipped where I needed to pull it over the doll's head. I was supposed to originally do it at the fold, that way it would be like a drape and then I could start making my cape from there. So I was trying to like pinch in the sides and get a feel for how I wanted to construct his robe and just start just doing it the way I'd done my uh, previous rag dolls. Okay, now I'm going to snip a bit in here because his cloak, his robe, should be loose fitting but i want it still to have a little definition so i was going to just nip it in like this but i don't think that'll look good with the way this felt is made the texture of the felt
So I started to slowly just cut on the sides and roll the fabric under to see how I could get the robe to really start to take shape. Then I snipped off some excess fabric on the side and hot glued the side closed and I did that on both sides. Okay, now I'm just going to dab just a little bit of glue on the underside of his sleeve and hold it down like this onto his side so it kind of pulls this down so his arms aren't straight out like he's gonna fall down like he's trying to keep his balance. Okay, so for his glasses, I'm gonna use this button as a template and just go around it in pencil and then fill it in with either um, a black 3D paint or an ac acrylic marker, an acrylic paint pen. Okay, for Harry's hat, I'm gonna use this brown yarn. And um, I'm better at doing girl doll hair when it comes to, to this um, yarn. The last boy rag doll, his hair ended up looking like helmet hair and I was not happy with that. But um, I think I got this figured out. I think if I just go string by string and just, um, follow the shape of the head that he'll be okay and just not use too much hot glue. I don't want it to be gunky looking. For Harry's scarf, I'm using this thin yarn I found at Dollar Tree, and I'm going to pull out enough so there's about uh, 9 to 10 strands in each section, and then I'm just going to plait them up. Some people call it a braid, but 
it's a plait. Plaits are just attached at your scalp and then they hang freely. So I'm just going to underhand plait this so it's not super tight. I want it to have just a bit of width so it looks nice around Harry's neck like it was in the movie. With my plait finished and both ends tied off, I'm using this gross grain ribbon because I couldn't find yarn this uh, same color. So initially I snipped a bit and I was just going to glue the little snip sections and then I came to my senses and started just to wrap little small sections around the entire plait. I found these miniature book covers and I'll be cutting out two of these, Advanced Potion Making and The Tales of Beetle the Bard and making Harry some miniature books. I'll link these in the description box if you want to print them out and make mini books at home. I have my book covers printed, uh, cut out. So I'm just going to take some paper and line it up to the same size snip a few of those and then I'm going to bend them and then glue them in place and that'll be my books. And using a scrap of a piece of bamboo, I snip it and this will become Harry's wand. I'm going to paint it with burnt umber and then wrap some twine around the end and paint that as well. I found a tiny Gryffindor crest and I applied that to Harry's robe with a little Aileen's tacky glue. Then I just added a little hot glue to attach my books together and a little bit more on the back of the larger book and then I attached it to Harry's robe so it looks like he was holding it. And then I added a little bead of hot glue to his wand and placed that on the other side. I'll also have these potion bottle labels, the link for these in the description box if you want to print these out and make potion bottles at home. And here he is all complete, my adorable homemade Harry Potter doll. I really love the way this turned out. I have to make more of the characters. I really need to do another video and make more character dolls. Please, you guys, tell me in the comments what do you think of my homemade Harry Potter doll? Here are some of the treats that Harry enjoyed in the movie. I found these on Amazon. The gummy slugs, that leaping chocolate frog, and who can forget the everything jelly beans, every flavor. Snot, boogers, yuck. And here's a look back at some of the other projects completed in this video. I 
I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I had a lot of fun making all these projects. There's so many more projects that I would love to make that I'm gonna have to make another video. If this is the type of content that you enjoy, please consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget, my magical word is Hedwig, and the giveaway ends on October 2nd. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the playlist and have a magical day.